Hey, what's up guys? Today we'll be talking about the new 2019 iMac. It was refreshed last week to 8th and 9th generation Intel CPUs with the new option for a Vega 48 graphics card. So just a small spec bump, no major design refresh. I don't think it really needs an introduction, so I guess we'll just jump right in, starting with the build of this thing. The build and design of the iMac remains the same as last year. It's still made entirely out of aluminum. The stand doesn't have any height or rotation adjustment, but you can tilt it up and down by quite a bit. The bezels are getting pretty stale now. It doesn't bother me when I'm actually using it, but outside of that, it's a well-built machine and it looks quite nice. The panel they're using is the same one from the 2017 iMac, so it's a 27-inch 5K panel with 520 nits of brightness. Color accuracy is good, but I would recommend calibrating it if you really want to nail those colors. I ran my Spider 5 on it and there was a difference when switching between the default and the calibrated color profile, but once you calibrate it, this thing is a beast for pretty much everything. On the bottom are the stereo speakers and these sound really good. They're loud, the bass response is great. If you've ever heard these in person, it's actually amazing how good they sound. They're really, really good speakers. The unit I'm reviewing here comes with the i5 9600K, 8GB of RAM, a 2TB Fusion Drive, and the Radeon Pro 580X. It comes standard with a 6-core 8th generation i5, and you can bump it up all the way to the Core i9 9900K with the Vega 48. Performance for what I do is not great because of how slow that Fusion Drive is. So I edit 4K videos in Final Cut and my 2016 15-inch MacBook Pro with the Skylake i7, it's a quad-core CPU, that thing performs significantly faster than this machine because the hard drive just can't write those 4K files fast enough. So if you're planning to purchase this machine, I recommend getting the base model with the 256GB SSD for $1900 and then upgrading the RAM yourself with a cheaper kit off Amazon. And even just for regular use, the hard drive makes everything feel sluggish, so whatever you do, just get an SSD because it's actually disgusting that they sell this thing with something that slow. The SSD portion of the Fusion Drive is okay, 2600 read and 700 write, but it's only a very small portion of the total 2 terabytes. Performance in games is good, it's about the equivalent of an RX 580, so games will run great at 1080p. The thermals for what I do are pretty good, I haven't noticed any throttling during video exports and gaming, but when you throw a stress test on it, it will thermal throttle, so as cool as it is to put a 9900K in here, there is the concern of thermal limitations. I mean, I'm barely hitting 80 degrees with my workload, so I could probably get away with using the 9900K, but thermals are definitely a concern. Fan noise on idle is audible, but it's very subtle, and when you max it out, they actually don't get that loud. It hits about 42 decibels on max, and I actually wonder why they put such a low speed limit on the fan, because they could have squeezed better thermals out of this thing if they let it run a bit faster. On the rear of the machine, you'll find all of your ports, so you get a headphone jack, an SD slot, four USB-A's, two USB-C ports with four lanes of Thunderbolt 3 each, and an Ethernet jack. So onto the conclusion, should you buy this machine? I definitely do not recommend any of the pre-configured options, they all use fusion drives which blows my mind, but the sweet spot I think is the base model with a 256GB SSD option for $1900. You get good performance and when you factor in the 5K screen and the awesome speakers, there's nothing really out there that does all of this for less. So that's the end of this review, hit the like button if you enjoyed it, also consider subscribing for more videos, I'll see you guys next time.